conclusions that are in the light most favorable to our client. Um, the question is, can we do that and maintain a, a, some level of objectivity distance? The question you guys think about is that harder to do when you have a different relationship when you somewhat are the client, you work with the client? Well, I think putting the spin on it, but not skewing the facts. Right. And when you're speaking to a board, I don't know how you put a spin on it, but not tell them the facts. Right. Whether you're outside or in the house. And from the in-house side, I feel we have more responsibility. Mm -hmm. The people we work with, we know every day, you don't give them half the information. We're there to deliver the good news and the bad news, what they do with that. Did she serve the board well with what she no, just did? Absolutely not. Was that good client service? Well, I think you need to figure out who's your client. Yeah. For example, the board may not be your client. Your client may be the CEO. Do you know, so I think there, there's some confusion right. there. Like you need to figure out and who your client then wants to tell their people below them, I think is their choice. But even who's your client and who's your authority. Right. And that's maybe right. you know, the client is really the clients, the shareholders, the company, everything, but one person, Jeffries or whoever, may wield all the power for whether you succeed in that company or not. Because you know that the, that Jeffries knew the truth of why they were settling that case. Sure. I mean, this wasn't just she. She was not the only person in that room. Right. Who knew? I did think it was interesting, Michael. This is the first time I noticed that the board was all older men. All oh, men. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering if that kind of gets back to you know Michael's eyes for the, the dad issue of um, you know I can't go in and tell all these older men you know that. That, that there's a problem that we've messed up and that we're toast and it's it's all bad. You know, she's still playing to something. Um, I've got to, I mean, even down to looking in her mirror to get the appearance right, I need to look right to sell this. And I've got the package ready for them and the tax people have already determined that basically the settlement will pay for itself. Yes, it's about the company, but again, we all agree it's not serving the company. It's not good representation. Because now it's about to all blow bigger. Um, but again, think back to where did she start off down that road? Because that's the key. Hopefully, none of us ends up there. Well, I know you talked about the big picture, but I mean, that memo she didn't create. Legal, legal had nothing to do, in house counsel, outside counsel. It didn't have anything to do with that memo. That's right. So, I mean, it really wasn't. It wasn't her screw up. That's right. Somebody so else made the decision. So I think that's something you got to remember. Right. But especially if you're in house, is that by the time it's a mess, you weren't even involved in. Mm -hmm. and, well, so, you, and you said that in, in the smaller group. I hope you don't mind me saying that. But you said you have to keep perspective. That it's a, it's it's my job. It's not everything. Right. right. Or the other thing is, I'll say, you know, I lost a case, and my boss will say. The facts your client gave you made you lose the case. And I think sometimes you have to, you know, to think of it that way. I mean, we didn't, they didn't come to us before and say, well, how should we handle X, Y, and Z? In that case, if you told them and they followed it, and then you have to settle, well, yeah, that might maybe give them bad advice. Yeah. But if they come to you after they've done the deed, and, right. then, and then you just and kind the of, you only, have, you only have so many options. And I think that's important as a lawyer. I mean, you only have so much control over a situation. I had somebody say something really helpful to me one time where I was really agonizing over losing, you know, losing ace, losing a key motion or whatever. And somebody's like, did you expect to win them all? Yes. Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Is that, is that yeah. a good yeah. expectation? <laughs> yeah. um, the same person I was saying, you know, hey, this got really stressful and this was tough and people were selling mean stuff and yelling. I was like, you knew what litigation was, didn't you? Do what you were signed up for. I mean, you're a lawyer. You're going to be out there. It's going to be rough and tumble sometimes. You're going to take some hits, um, and you're going to lose. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. And, and sometimes maybe I'm supposed to lose. And really, I don't know when those times are. Um, okay. That again, just a little dose of perspective, really helpful. Oh yeah. I, it doesn't mean I'm supposed to win everything. Sometimes my client is just wrong. Um, sometimes I don't know by the end of it. I've heard both sides, and I don't know what the heck happened or how they got there, or who's the bigger scalawag that should, you know, end up with the mess that they created. Um, that helps too, to uh, not get so identified with my client's position that, you know, I lose sight of, you know, really, I wasn't there when they went down this road and when these things happened, and I'm here to try to do what I can to clean the mess, but really,
there's only so much I can do with so many, certain situations. Uh, again, a helpful uh, grid because if I start thinking I have to fix this, or else I'm not very smart, or I won't get any more business, or um, I won't you know, make my firm fill flower requirements this year, or whatever, 